Good morning, distinguished guests, and welcome. First, let me start my intervention with expressions of gratitude towards the organizers and participants of this important event. My name is Sergio Maita. I am a chemical engineering graduate from National University of Engineering in Lima, Peru. Currently, I am working on the development of strategies for the valorization of lignocellulosic biomass into bio-based products. Today, I have the honor to present this research under the next title, Extraction and Characterization of Cellulose from our Cultural Residue, say maize. Now, to begin with, I'm gonna start with an introduction. Corn nowadays is the most cultivated cereal in the world with a production of more than a thousand million tons every year. In Peru, my home country, more than 400,000 of corns were harvested during 2020. In fact, out of this huge production volume, only 20% of it represents the edible part, leaving the rest as agricultural residues. These residues are mainly disposed by open air burning, causing several impacts on the surrounding ecosystems and detrimental effects on people's health. Also, even Peruvian authorities have alerted people on the risk of this practice and strongly recommended to stop it. On the other hand, Lignocellulosic biomass has received much attention over the last decade since it constitutes a promising renewable source of fuels and biomaterials. In that way, this work focused on the valorization of corn has residues into cellulose through the combination of both mechanical and chemical treatment. Now, I'm going to talk about the materials and methods employed. The corn class fixed stock was collected from local markets in Lima, Peru. Analytical grade of all the chemicals were also used. Here in the scheme, we can see the procedure follow for the cellulose isolation. First up, all the collected corn has were washed with water several times and classified. After washing, the washing, excuse me, the samples were kept in a hot air oven at 45 degrees until no change in the mass was noticed. Then the husk were crushed into a pestle molar and a blender. Fine powder was obtained with a nominal mesh of 0.45 millimeters. The dry powder was then treated with alkaline treatment under the conditions that we can see on the screen. Then we proceed with bleaching. In th this case, we use two different reagents. First up, sodium chloride and then hydrogen peroxide. Also, an attempt to obtain microcrystal and nanocrystal was performed under the procedure that uh, we can see on the slide. Now I want to focus on the results and the discussion of the cellulose isolation. Here in the very first image, we can see the aspect of the sample after each chemical treatment. As we move forward from left to right, we notice the change in color of the powder until finally, after bleaching, we obtained a white product. Now, about the FTIR, in order to identify characteristic functional groups of spectral bands, we carry out this uh, characterization. Now, bands of cellulose were found at 1,426, 1,325, 1,163. While on the other hand, the decrease in signals at 1,251 and 100, I'm sorry, 1,736 indicates that hemicellulose and 
were partially removed after we performed the chemical treatment. The effect was uh, actually more evident in bleaching with the sodium chloride. Also, it is important to note that we here have strong bands at 1,636. This indicates the presence of absorbed water. This goes in agreement with the tendency to absorb substantial amounts of water um, that lignocellulosic materials have. So an effective drying technique must be applied such as lyophilization or a hot air oven for several hours. Also, a, another technique that we used was X-ray diffraction. Wide angle X-ray diffraction analysis of extracted cellulose, commercial cellulose and corn has powder was performed using Brooker D8 Advanced X-ray Diffractometer. The intense peaks in the diffractogram of the sample are located at values around uh, 17, 22.7, 35, and 45. The appearance of sharp peaks attributes typical crystalline nature of cellulose. The intensity of the peaks becomes sharp uh, sharper after chemical treatments, which indicates better defined crystalline domains of cellulose. Also, the peak at 27, I'm sorry, 17, correspond to lattice plane 110, and the ones at 22.7 and 35 correspond to lattice plane 002 and 004, respectively. Uh, also, we determine the crystallinity index, as we can see on the screen after using this equation, empirical equation, and we also present the results that we found. The increase of crystallinity was due to the removal of semicellulose and lignin. In other words, the release of crystalline areas after the intermolecular bones of this group in amorphous regions got broken. Now, I would like to point some conclusions. Uh, this work allow us to conclude that corn has residues constitute an interesting and promising alternative as cellulose source and derivates. This feedstock is renewable, vastly, and most important, available in many regions, unlike wood. An effective and practical procedure was used to extract cellulose from corn husk. The result derived from the FTAR spectroscopy and next ray diffraction confirmed both lignin and hemicellulose were removed during the chemical treatment. Now, I would like to acknowledge I would like to say thank you to some people. Uh, addressing this, I would like to thank Prociencia for the financial support through the research project number 204 on the SEED 2020. Also, Professor Clemente Luyo for the instrumental analysis and Professor Maria Quintana for the guidance and trust. Finally, we all the authors thank and express our gratitude to the 20. 22 Global Conference on Polymers, Plastic, and Composites organized by Innovic International in Budapest, Hungary. Greetings from the group of biomaterials and polymers here in Lima, Peru.